Welcome to Class Online School. Today we are continuing our class um, on the forms of businesses. Remember our last class we discussed sole proprietorship and the partnership kind of business. And so today we are going to go into another form of business which is limited liability kind of business. What is a limited liability company? Okay, let me add a company here. Limited liability company. liability company that's another form of business a limited liability company is a form of business that the individuals who owns this business their risk only ends with what they contribute into the business that's to say that a limited liability company is a kind of business whereby the cat Peter contributed into the business is only what the individual risk at the death of the company. Or anytime the, the, the company wins up. Or like the sole proprietorship and partnership for some kind of partnership. But for the limited liability, it solely depends on the capital contributed that the owner of the business have to lose. Their liability do not go straight into their personal life or personal property. So that is a limited liability company. And limited liability company gets their capital most times through shares. It can be a share that is subscribed to the general public. Or it can be a kind of share that is private. That is to say, selected individual have to contribute this share. And the share in here is the capital contributed into the business. So, we have different um, forms of limited liability company. We have the private limited liability company and the public limited liability company. For this stage in business study, for your stage, we are only going to talk about limited liability company in general. When we take you commerce, we're going to dive into improper what limited liability companies are, the different type of limited liability company. But for today and for this class and for your level, we're only going to deliberate on limited liability company as it um, relates to public kind of limited liability. Now, have we known what limited liability company is? We are going to deliberate on the advantages and the disadvantages. So, we'll take another form, which is the advantages of a limited then the disadvantage and the disadvantages of a limited liability company. Now, have we talked about the two types of limited liability, which is the public and the private, but I said this class is going to deliberate majorly on the um, public. For the public limited liability company, it can, um, the individuals who can start it up is from seven to infinity. Then, the public can subscribe for shares. Anybody from the general public can subscribe for share. And if you know that you are not comfortable with that company, you can equally transfer your share, which is your capital. Somebody can buy it over from you, give you your money, and then buys off your share. And the person continues from where you stop. 
that by the time we go into a private limited liability company, shares are not transferable. Then, for the public limited liability company, any company you see and it ends with PLC, um, LTD, you know that this is a limited liability company. But when it ends with PLC, you know that this is public limited liability kind of company. So, in this class, we are going to focus on businesses that end with PLC. That is, it's a kind of public liability company where the general public can subscribe for shares where the shares is transferable between members if you're tired of the company you can transfer your share to another person and where each member can be from seven to infinity depending on, on how many person wishes to subscribe or how many person wishes to buy off the shares of the company so having known that let's try and take the advantages as it relates to limited liability company what are the uh, what are the advantages we are going to take a number of advantages one it required large capital large capital it required large capital to start up and so by the time the public are uh, told that there, are, there is a kind of share for this particular company, you find out that a number of persons will come subscribe for it. And so the capital involved is always very large. It goes into the millions or billions. And because there are many persons that subscribe for this share or buys of this share, the capital is easily gotten. And as large as it is, people come together and the contribution is much more easy so unlike the sole proprietorship and the partnership kind of business limited liability companies come up with large kind of capital huge kind of capital then that's one advantage then number two is that it's a legal entity too it's a legal entity when i mean what do i mean by legal entity it implies that it's a company it's a personality on its own. When I say it's a personality on its own, it's because it can be sued and sued. That means they can sue the business as a person or as an entity. Just like you can sue me if I do wrong or you sue me because you have an issue. You can sue a business because there is an issue that is involved. So it is a legal entity. It's recognized. It is registered. It is known as a legal entity that's one advantage of it but, but in the case of um, a sole proprietor it might not be so most times they are not legal entity because it's owned by the individual so it's the individual you sue not the company but in this case you sue the company not the individuals that own it that's another advantage that it has then another advantage is how is that shareholders have limited liability shareholders have limited liabilities what do i mean by they have limited liabilities it means that just the capital they contributed is what can go off when the business dies off nobody will come and sell their personal properties their personal property is not part of the business the only thing that is part of the business is the share they bought. That's the capital they put into the business. So it's an advantage because at winning out of this business, nobody comes to you and say, um, your business is owing me this or owing me that, so you have to pay. No. So that is another advantage it has. Then number four advantage is its existence is a continuous one. Continuous existence. Continuous existence. That is to say that if one person dies or one person leaves the company, is that it transfers the share to another person or 
is inherited by the children. It doesn't bring the business to an end. Unlike sole proprietorship or some kind of partnership that if one person leaves the partnership or if the owner of the business dies, the business dies. No, it's not like that for limited liability companies. It continues to exist even when somebody leaves or when somebody dies. So that's why we said continuity of existence is very important. It's an advantage. Then the third one is efficient management. Efficient management. What do I mean by efficient management? A limited liability company, they have board of directors. So these board members make sure that the company is functioning effectively. And members of these boards are intelligent individuals who know how to carry out managerial procedures. So its management is very efficient. Unlike the sole proprietor, it's that just one person. Here we have board members. There are a number of persons, not just one. And so they come together with their talents, with their um, professionalism, and the rest of them into the business. So they do things better than a sole proprietor, and even better than sometimes a partnership kind of business. Then we have possibility of expansion is the sixth one. Expansion. Expansion. There is possibility that because of the huge capital involved, remember that shares are given out to the public and these shares are bought and these shares translate into capital, which is the money. And because there are a lot of persons that contribute their share into this company, the amount of capital that is realized is normally very big and large. And since it's big and large, the company might not just be established in one place. It might be established in different places. So expansion is encouraged. Unlike the sole proprietor, that it will take him a while or a time to put his business in other places to expand. So limited liability companies expand more easily than other forms of business we've discussed. And then lastly, large production volume. Large production. Large production. Because there, are, uh, there is a lot of money involved, machines, equipment required for production are always available. The organization, the company buys all that is necessary to make production very easy. So these are the advantages of limited liability company. Now let's go to the disadvantages. These are advantages. These are the advantages. Then I'm going to wipe it off because we're taking the advantages. We're going to the disadvantages. So we'll go to the disadvantages. disadvantages one they lack privacy they lack privacy because they are mandated by law that the account has to be pub uh, has to be published in the public and so most times the account is before the general public so no privacy and taxation they cannot avert taxation. Every detail is published and then the company is taxed. So no privacy about the business. That's one. Then two, conflict of interest. You see, board members are already elected and these board members are individuals. And remember, we all have our shortcomings. And so these board members can have conflict from time to time. Conflicts can come up and that can cause a little hinge in the company. And so another disadvantage is it that they have conflict of interest. Conflict of interest. 
And so where this conflict of interest arises, the business suffers. Then the third one is slow decision making. Slow decision making. Unlike the sole proprietor I told you of, I said within two seconds, the sole proprietor can make his decision and carry out whatever he wants to do. But in a limited liability company, all board members must be seated for decision to be taken. Or at least a portion or a ratio of the board members will be present before decisions are taken. So there is slow decision making. It's not like the partnership or the sole proprietor. Then another disadvantage is that payment of large tax, taxation. Because the account is before the general public, the, 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 the company is always taxed appropriately. The sole proprietor might not be taxed as much as the limited liability company will be taxed. And the amount going into tax is always very large. So that's another disadvantage because a large proportion of the profit coming into the business might be taxed. Then what again is another disadvantage? It lacks flexibility. It lacks flexibility. Lack flexibility. What do we mean by lack flexibility? Because all their doings are already um, registered or already documented in the memorandum of association. Everything they are doing have to follow a legal proceeding. So no flexibility. You don't yield to the left or to the right. It has to be the way it is written in the memorandum. So the memorandum is what you follow and that is what they follow. So there is no flexibility. Like the sole proprietor can decide to say, okay, I'm not going to do it this way. I'm going to do it that way. It's not like that for um, the limited liability company. Large capital is involved. Large capital large capital. If the general public do not subscribe to your share, you will not get that money. And so one individual or two individuals cannot come up with this huge sum of money. So there must be as many subscribers as possible, as many shareholders as possible, as many persons that want to come into the business to buy share as possible for the business to start up. So it requires large capital to start up. Unlike the sole proprietor that can just start up even with a little capital in his hands. Then, the seventh one, hard to establish. Hard to establish. Establish. It's hard to establish because if the capital required is not there, business cannot go on. So, the, the amount required is very large. You can't just wake up one morning and say, I want to go um, start up a limited liability company. No. This amount of money must come up and then it has to start up. And you must follow normal legal procedure. If you cannot follow normal legal procedure, you cannot establish. So that is another thing that makes it very difficult. Then lastly, decreases interpersonal interest. So all of these are disadvantages of a limited liability company. So this is another form of business. In our next class, we're going to talk about a cooperative society, which is another form of business. Thank you for dropping back. Thank you for being part of our class today.